I'm Ellie and I'm a physiotherapist. I've been working with the Olympic Archery Squad for the last eight months or so and we'll probably continue to work with them up until the Tokyo Games next year. Um, and I was just asked this, e this evening to um, take part in your webinar series um, and to do something around um, fitness for archery. Um, so from a physiotherapy perspective, being fit for archery means a few things to me. Initially, it means that people are injury free um, and therefore able to be on the shooting line to be able to perform at their, at their best. The other thing that it means is that once someone has performed, they are able to recover and prepare themselves properly to allow them to shoot the next day or the next time that they need to go into training as well. And the other parts of that means is, um, I guess, the work that we do alongside our strength and conditioning coaches um, and our, our archery coaches as well. Um, so does somebody have the strength to be able to pull the bow um, and to use the poundage that they want to be able to? And equally, do they have the endurance to be able to repeat that technique over and over whilst maintaining the good technique um, and be able to do that for arrows, volume, distance, over and over um, until the end of their archery session? So the aim of this video was really to to cover a few of those things together um, and I guess to look at a slightly different approach that we've started to use within the Olympic archery squad itself. Um, so initially strength and conditioning on its own means something um, normally quite specific. So we pick out a specific muscle group and we specifically want to train that muscle group to be strong. Uh, for example, doing a bicep curl, obviously we want to then strengthen our bicep muscles. What we've started to do with our, our archery and Olympic squad is to do a more whole body movement um, uh, that involves our whole kinetic chain. Uh, we're still sort of trialling that at the minute to see, one, how many sessions a week does that seem to work well for? Um, and I guess the ratio of that alongside normal, more traditional strength training sessions allows us to have the best outcome from our athletes. And those conversations initially start around recovery and more body weighted exercises and the things we'll be doing tonight where you don't need any extra equipment. Um, and it's slightly evolved from that and we'll talk about how you can progress a few of the exercises as we go on or if they just need to remain body weighted um, for some of those more beginners out there. So I will be using, I'll be using just a two kilogram weight plate um, and I'll talk as well while we go through if there's anything else that you could use, any other household item. Generally speaking, you don't obviously don't need the weight plate. You could use even just um, a bottle of water, um, tins of beans, that kind of thing. Um, they all obviously weigh themselves half a kilo um, or two litre bottles of water bottles of fizzy pop, whatever you've got around, it could, it could equally be swapped in and out. Uh, and the other thing they'll be using is just a uh, long looped TheraBand, which are easy enough to purchase if you don't have any. Most people, as I understand it now, seem to have something like this as part of their warm-up or, or activation, um, or at least now that we've been in lockdown as part of their, their workouts as well. They're easy enough and cheap enough to buy, and I do like them in the fact that they are obviously travel friendly um, and it means that we can take them around the world with us um, take them wherever they're easy enough to carry um, they obviously come in different weight uh, sort of resistance um, normally the different colors mean different resistance and that depends what kind of brand you buy as well now um, but that's for kind of individuals to sort of understand and trial them and see which ones work work best for you and again I'll try and explain as we go through you know, where you can use one or perhaps where you can just put it to the side and just for it to be body weighted or where you can use different things or perhaps where I feel like they're a bit of a benefit as well. Um, so we'll be using that. And just to say that obviously if you feel any pain or discomfort as you're going through any of these exercises, um, just stop and you can always seek um, your own sort of healthcare professional advice. And if you're under the 80, 
under the age of 18, you could also just check with a responsible adult that these are suitable exercises or a suitable programme for yourself. Um, and obviously individuals are all very different, individual needs, um, individual well, baselines, different baselines where people are starting from. Um, so those individual circumstances must be taken into consideration. Um, and again, if you have any concerns while you're doing any of these things, um, then just leave that one out to the side. You can carry on with the rest of it as long as you're feeling confident and um, you're otherwise asymptomatic and you feel like this is an appropriate workout programme for yourself. So first of all, it's just worth double checking that you have a nice clear space to work from. Um, and obviously a safe in environment in which to work and we will be taking our arms up overhead as well so just to make sure you have enough ceiling height as well really um to be able to do the the activities and the tasks so most sports when we think about strength and conditioning of our upper limbs have either a push or pull element which is the main focus of the strength and conditioning uh, so for example with rowing is an obvious pull sport but for archery we have both a push and a pull element um, so hence we're going to show an example or examples of exercises that involve both pushing and pulling. So our pull exercise is going to be a bent over row. So I'm going to take the theraband or if you don't have a theraband you could just use um, some weights in your school bag or in a gym bag on the floor. We're going to put a slight bend in our knees and try and maintain a nice straight back from our hips all the way up to our head. I'm going to come down into this position and then just going to pull up towards the ceiling. So bending through our elbows. And again, we're going to keep that nice, strong, rigid back as opposed to allowing our bodies to curl down. So everything from our hip upwards is nice and straight. And like I said, if you don't have any um, theraband, I'm just standing on this with my feet. If you don't have anything like that, you can just start with some some weights in a um, in a school bag or gym bag, and just again that same mechanism of pulling upwards. And then for our push exercises, that's going to involve anything where the floor is going to give us some some feedback. So any kind of push up variation, anything where we might start to look at um, say handstand mechanics or beginners sort of yoga poses around handstanding. Um, pigeon poses that kind of thing um things like planks um and bear crawls and we're going to go with, through a few of those today so i'm going to start with a a long arm side plank so we want to be nice engaged all the way through our chain and what we want initially is that nice straight line all the way from the floor up into our arm and out the other side. So for this next one we're just going to go through some variations of um, of your side plank um, and just see some progressions as to how you can make it a bit more difficult. So ideally we want to start long arm. If this is too difficult you can start down on your forearm. Again we want everything to be nice and stacked on top of our elbow and through our shoulder and then up into the other shoulder. But like I said, ideally you want to be up and into this position because this is where we, the position of our arm as you're holding your bow. So ideally, like I said, we need to be straight armed. So the way that we can add things to this is that we can add a rotation. Or we can add something like a, a side flexion, which is again going to make all our um, lateral muscle groups work. So the other variations of a side plank, we're kind of making our tummy muscles and our core work that little bit harder. Um, with this variation, this may make our, the I guess the proprioceptive element of the exercise um, more of a benefit. So again, you can start in that same position, that nice straight line down from your hand up through your shoulders and the other side, not letting anything dip or collapse, staying nice and active for our core and our glutes. And then you could just have a look up to that hand and you could either have someone 
give it a bit of instability either side by sort of tapping on your arm. Or you can just add a, um, a bit of a weight and again just start to deliberately sway it yourself. It doesn't have to be much of a movement but the important thing is to control it and not allow your body to overcompensate by going too far out of its range. So just really small rotational movements. So when we're shooting outdoors, our bodies obviously have to contend with the wind and we very unconsciously have to absorb or oppose the forces of the wind depending on the direction that it's going in, especially when you're in full draw and you've got the most amount of te tension going through your body. Um, so we're gonna really exaggerate that, I guess, through an exercise in order to allow our bodies to condition itself um, to how it will react when it's when it's um, needing to oppose oppose the wind when you're out. So you can use something up overhead, so you can do this overhead instead of that's easier. So in the gym, our Olympic archers would use um, weight plates, or again, if you don't have anything that you can hold both arms overhead, um, then you can again use something like a two litre bottle of cough or water. I'm going to use my TheraBand and make sure it's sort of securely in on the door. And we're going to do this in all directions. So I'm going to start forward. I'm going to take both my hands overhead. And all I'm going to do is just put a little bit of pressure forward onto my toes and back again. So it's really important with any of these that you don't let the TheraBand kind of ping you backwards. And that you control the movement all the way through. So all I'm doing is putting a bit extra pressure through balls of my feet and then controlling it back down again. And you're going to do that in all directions, including to the side. So you're also going to come just leaning over to the side and back down. So as you can see, my shoulders are a bit tight. They don't quite go all the way up overhead. Um, but if you can, ideally, you want your shoulders and arms to be as straight as possible. And you're also going to do that leaning backwards as well. So again, same thing, just coming back onto the heels of your feet. Just stand a bit closer so you can see. And again, just controlling the movement forwards again. And if you wanted to make that any harder, you could always do it standing on something a bit more unsteady or you could sew something like a sofa cushion if you haven't got something like a wobble cushion at home um, or alternatively you could do it standing on one leg but because we shoot on two legs um, it's advisable that we do it that way um, and like I said arms up nice overhead you don't necessarily have to do it with a TheraBand you can do it with um, with anything that just gives you a bit of extra weight overhead or alternatively just starting body weighted and again just playing around with Coming forwards, rocking backwards, side, side to side. So the next exercise we're going to do um, is probably one of the harder exercises. It's called a bear crawl. Um, and really we want to keep and maintain a nice straight spine um, whilst we're moving through our arms and legs. So we're going to come down just onto our, hopefully onto our fingertips and onto our toes. So that it's kind of crawling position, but with our uh, knees a couple of inches off the floor. If this position is enough just to make your core feel like it's working, then that's fine. But hopefully what we want to do is start to transfer a bit of body weight forwards, backwards, and then eventually turn that into a locomotion. So starting to step forwards, opposite arm, opposite leg. And if that feels okay, then generally we want to turn that into a movement. And then if you can, if that's easy enough, then we're just going to do it side to side as well.
So again, just keeping our back nice and straight throughout. And the least weight you can put through your hands and feet, the better really. And we just want them to move nice and fluidly in coordination with each other. So because we spend a lot of time in archery, obviously in a standing upright position, and with our backs either in neutral or I guess slightly extended at times, um, essentially we're in more of an extension posture during the day than than say office workers that may be more flex because they're sitting down all day. Um, but even when you're just shooting for a few hours, I feel like it's important then to come out of that position. Um, and whether you do this before or after training, but come out of that position just to allow our, our spines to experience every range of its movement and our shoulders to experience every range of their movement. Um, so this is just going to be a really short, almost uh, flow that you could do. And then after that, we could show you, um, or I'll show you, just something you could do with some resistance um, that may help just strengthen through your back extensors as well. So we're just going to start with lifting our arms up overhead. I'm just going to allow our, our lower backs to flex down and bend our knees and come back up again. If you want to do these as two separate things, so reaching up first and then having your arms cradled and then reaching down, that's fine. Some people feel like if they allow their arms to relax that they just get a bit more freedom in their lower back as well. And you can just sway through the movement there and then bend your knees to come back up again. So try and relax everything just from your hips and your lower back. And again then you can just allow your, your hands to relax. And you could take them over to each side. And bend the knees to come back up. And if you're not comfortable doing it in standing, you could also do it sitting down. So just sat upright with your legs out in front of you. Again, keeping your pelvis forwards rather than letting it slump backwards. Um, and then just coming forwards either with your hands on the floor or down to each toe. And um, just again, so you're getting a little bit of flexion through the spine rather than maintaining it in a standing upright posture as we do with archery. And then we're just going to mimic a, uh, a deadlift. So you can just do this body weighted or you can do it with, with some TheraBand as well. So I'm just going to start with it there. Slight bend in the knee. Sticking our chest forwards and to come down. And then squeezing your bottom muscles to come back up again. So just do it side on. there and then squeeze and thrust your hips forwards to come back up. And where you can try and maintain your your legs nice and straight. And that will just give us a bit more mobility through our hamstrings as well. So this again is going to be just um, a quick sort of yoga flow type type movement to go through the ranges that we don't necessarily hit um, when we're in archery. Um, and it's really important that we use every joint through its full range. Otherwise, we start to lose that range and we become quite stiff um, and inflexible. Um, and then we're going to go on just to show you how you can add some resistance um, to the sort of thoracic region and how you might start to strengthen up around there. It's a region that we quite often forget about, um, but it's this main larger bit of our spine between our lumbar, which is obviously the bottom bit, um, and our neck. And then the bit in the middle there 
is our thoracic spine. And whilst there isn't a great deal of movement there, we do need it to extend up with our shoulders when we get to that last range of flexion in our shoulders. Um, and it's also really important in terms of rotation and opening, opening up your chest wall um, as you get into full draw for archery. Um, so hence it's a really important area to keep mobile um, and also to strengthen up. So we're just going to start with a bit of a lunge forward. You know, drop that knee down onto the floor. Place both our hands down. And then just to open up. So we should be feeling a bit of a stretch down the front of this leg into our hip flexors. And then coming up, which will start to get our thoracic spine moving. And then from there, we're going to push back and sit back and just get a bit of a stretch through our hamstrings as well. And this time when you come forward, I'm going to tuck that leg under, keep our back leg behind and come and relax down on the floor. Sorry, let me move into a bit of a better position. And relax down. Come have a sit up and we're going to put our legs into 90 degrees in front of us and then bring the other one up behind. Both our hips and knees are at 90 degrees. And from there, you're just going to try and sit nice and straight. And again, you might feel a bit of a stretch through the front here, through our rotators, and then through the back there, possibly through your glute. And you're going to try and maintain that forward pelvic position and really squeeze your legs outwards. So nice and wide push, push, push. Try not to sit back and let yourself slump, but sit forward, push out to the side. Okay. Come round to the same position on the other side. If you can to get a bit of a different stretch through your spine and your chest, you can come down into that or rotate into that. And then after a few seconds, you're just gonna push backwards so you're going to come back out into that position and again you can come down there or rotating your arms around out to the side for example and then push back up onto that side so you're coming back onto your foot on this side plant your hands again and then come back out to the side And again, push backwards and you're going to come all the way back again to then reach down and have, feel a big stretch through your hamstring. And then from there, you're just going to push upwards. So again, you might feel a bit of a stretch there as you come up. Allow your back foot to turn turn outwards and we're just going to stay here with our arms out nice and wide for out here and again you're just going to allow yourself to flex forwards and come back up from there you could also put a bit more pressure forward through your foot and you could also come say up onto your toes in the front foot and back down so just getting our calf to work a little bit more as well, which again, we don't tend to do in archery. And then bringing our arms together and again, opening up your chest. You might even start here and bring your arm back and then open up, which again is just getting our thoracic moving. And you could do that on both sides as well. 
And from there, if you wanted to add a bit of a, um, a bit of resistance, you could do. Now I'd obviously expect that you spend longer in each of those positions, but just as an example and a, a flow of process to kind of go through, I've just done it kind of quickly. Um, but like I say, you might find as well that with that routine on the floor that you might go from side to side a couple of times um, until you start to feel like everything's releasing off. Again, that might be individual. Um, some of you may not need it as much as others, especially if you've come from sports such as gymnastics, where um, you're obviously automatically a little bit more flexible. Um, but however, that may, might be where resistance becomes a little bit more important because you need to work a bit harder to start to activate things because your movement and your range becomes a little bit easier to you or comes a little easier to you than some other people. Um, as you can tell, I'm a runner, um, therefore I don't move very well in the slightest um, compared to what some of you would do. And um, so I'm just going to show you now as well that while we're on the topic of thoracic that it also likes a rotation movement. So if we start down by our side and then you're going to do a diagonal chop up to the ceiling on the opposite side. To make this a little bit harder, you can take your feet a bit further back or easier. Again, you can start just feet together, standing still, and then going up. Um, obviously, by doing this, we're winding our base of support, um, sorry, narrowing our base of support. And you can also come up onto your toes to sort of challenge your balance a little bit more as you come up through that movement. And again, don't let the theraband kind of ping you back down. Shut nice and slowly up, and then slowly all the way back down as well. So we obviously spoke a little bit at the start about combining movements um, and getting our kinetic chain a little bit more involved, rather than focusing solely on our shoulders and our chest, where we do all the movement from. Um, and we know of anything from research now in physiotherapy that no, no one muscle works on its own or isolated. It works with the rest of our body um, to achieve its, its function. Um, so hence, we've sort of started to add in these extra movements into the Olympic squad um, programs. So we're going to start with a lunge and squat with overhead presses or even just overhead holds. So having our shoulder overhead, again, similar to the plank, just makes our smaller rotational muscles work a little bit harder that are involved in the stability of our shoulder joint. Um, that as well as if our arm is overhead, especially with a weight or something else involved, a uh, tin of beans, um, then it's an additional factor for our trunk to have to compensate with, such as when you're holding the bow and it's obviously just in one arm. Um, and we've continuously got our muscles very unconsciously opposing it to try not to collapse or try not to lean into that into that position um, and again fighting with things like the wind um, so again having our arm in an overhead position even if it's not functional to the sport gives us a lot of benefit so again you could just start with this body weighted and depending on how comfortable you feel in your hips, again, everyone's squat may look a little bit different. But you can just come down and then bring your arms up to the ceiling. I apologise again, my shoulders just don't, don't move too well. And you could again do that with... with a theraband, so coming down and then really opening up when you come back up. And then similarly with a lunge, you start with your arm in the air again, with just with a tin of beans coming forward. 
or turn into a walking lunge or so. So you could also move your other arm out to the side there with your other arms overhead with the lunge to make it a little bit more difficult. I just tend to have my hand on my stomach really just as a reminder to keep my back nice and straight and tall uh, rather than allowing it to hunch forwards. It's just a prompt for me that, that helps me. Otherwise you could just have your hand on your hip or down by your side. It doesn't necessarily matter. The important thing is trying to maintain a nice neutral back as you're bending down into that position whilst maintaining the arm overhead which gives that little bit of instability and like I said makes those smaller muscles just work a little bit harder. So thank you very much for watching that's all I have uh, for today's webinar I hope it made sense as to why we do some of those things and uh, why we've started to implement a lot of it. Again some of it we're just using as kind of a trial and error at the minute is things that we haven't tried before and everyone's got an individual program so it's very much based on where people started from um, and the types of body movements that they like or that they can control already and um, progressing from there but I hope that the two sort of yoga flows perhaps give you something that you could do um, before you started your archery warm-up or again afterwards as part of a recovery of coming out of your normal archery position and like I said just taking all of your joints through their their entire range so we don't become stiff and inflexible and that the other things just add as to elements that you can start to put together for your own conditioning program and ways that you can progress those um, and hopefully if you put all of those things together that makes a nice whole body and rounded circuit that has largely elements that apply then to our, our archery and shooting um, and it might be that you you know you do almost what we call like supersets so you put one push exercise with a pull and you might do a set of those together um, and do three or four sets of those and then swap to go on to two core exercises um, but hopefully it goes and gives enough for you to go away with and um, you can start to think about how you put those things together um, or you could always seek some some other external input um, from physio or a strength and conditioning coach if this is something that you'd like to explore more of in your own shooting. Um, but thank you very much. I hope it was helpful. Um, and I'm sure I'll be doing something for you soon again in the future. Thank you.